Happy Mother's Day. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a prayer for mom. A prayer for mom. And uh, the prayer for mom comes from a genealogy of all places. Have you ever noticed that uh, tucked away in most genealogies there's something exciting? Uh, there's a one in uh, Genesis 5, and it's just name after name after name. And then it says a guy by, uh, by the name of Enoch, he, he walked with God, and he was not because God took him. He didn't die. Okay, right in the middle, there's that, that little choice nugget. And, and almost all of them. Now, some of you are doing reading through the Bible, and, and you're going to be this Saturday starting Chronicles. And the first nine chapters of Chronicles are genealogies, one right after the other. And you come across big, hard names like Mahershala Hashbaz. That's a hard one to say. <laughs> Don't try saying that 10 times in a row, you know? And, uh, you know, you're going to find right in the middle of this lengthy section, nine chapters of names and genealogy, the text I want to talk about today. In that desert of reading all those names, there's just this real nugget. And in this passage, it talks by, about a guy by the name of Jabez, Jabez. And I want to first ask a question. What does your mom call you? What does your mom call you? All right. Well, my mom called me Bruce for the first 30 minutes of my life. I was Bruce. But while she was recovering from having me, <laughs> She got thinking about Bruce, and the only thing that was popping in her head was, now I don't even remember this, but back in the day there was a Bruce floor wax. <laughs> and my mom said, I don't want my son to be trampled on <laughs> like floor wax. She said the second thought that jumped in her mind was a dog down the street that barked and barked and barked, and his name was Bruce. And she said, I don't want a kid that is just yakety, yak, yak, yak. I guess that's what I do for a living, though. <laughs> and, and, and so my mom changed my name. If, if I would have been a girl, which she was hoping for, she was going to name me Denise. So you, you see there's a little similarity between Denise and what she changed my name to, Dennis. Yeah. In fact, my, my name comes from the Greek. It comes from uh, Dionys Dionysus, Dionysus. The feminine form is Dionysius. <laughs> and so you can see how that, that the name came. And so the name, though, my name, what it actually means is the god of wine and debauchery. <laughs> I said, Mom, what are you thinking? What are you thinking, Mom? You think, you think I'm going to be a party animal? Excuse me, Dennis, but you've told us this story before. I think you should tell them about my name since it's Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you hear that? I said, excuse me, Dennis, <laughs> we've heard this story before. So I think you should tell them about my name since it's Mother's Day. That's right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, bring that with you. Come on up. I didn't plan on this part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He told me one line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Diane, your name is from the French. But it should be Italian. I'm 100% Italian. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't you take the test, the, the yeah. DNA test? Yeah. Are, are you really 100% Italian? Yes, that test was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Because it's Mother's Day, I'm going to let you slide on that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but your name is from the French, because the French spells it with two N's. Everybody else spells it with one. Mm -hmm. All right. But what's this idea, Dee Dee? That's what I was called through my whole childhood. My whole family called me Dee Dee, and all my friends from high school still call me Dee Dee. So if you ever hear anybody call me Dee Dee, they're my high school friends. <laughs> Post high school, I've been Diane. Yeah, so I tried Dee Dee, and she said, my name is Diane. <clears throat> well, at least it's not Dionysus. 
And, and so uh, <clears throat> every now and then you'll hear me call her Di. That's short for Diane. Yeah. Okay, so and I'm, not, I'm not asking her to do that, <laughs> Di. I, I'm, as, I'm saying Di is short for, for Diane. Hey, you know what though? There's a big difference between our names, but they're both based on a god and a goddess. Hers is on the Roman goddess, uh, which is very similar to the Greek goddess. And uh, what her name actually means is? Heavenly and divine. Oh. Is, is that true or what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. <laughs> and so, so somebody has asked me, how could somebody so heavenly and di uh, divine wind up with such a wino? <laughs> it was... Opposites attract. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm, asked, I'm saying all this because what is in a name? Dropped right in the series of genealogy, man. You're struggling to pronounce all these names in, in, in the first Chronicles. And you come to this guy by the name of Jabez, who was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother had named him Jabez. Can I tell you what his name sounds like in Hebrew? If we were to trans, translate this over, she called him Pain. Pain, like an ache, it hurts, a pain. Now, I know that a few times I've been a pain to you, the, the you-know-what to my mom, and, and, but she named him Pain. Listen, saying, I gave birth to him in pain, in pain. Well, there's a reason for the name. In the Bible, all the names seem to have a reason. And the reason for this, she gives us, I gave birth to him in pain. But what kind of pain? Was it the labor pain? I got to tell you this story. I love my mom. And my mom has gone into heaven. And my oldest brother attends here in the summertime. He's the Florida resident that comes up here. And when my oldest brother was born, I heard my mom tell this story so many times. When she was expecting, she went to the hospital. And it was in the day when they had a labor ward. Anybody remember what a labor ward was? You didn't have these private luxury rooms like they have today. It was just kind of a sterile long room, bed after bed, and all the women who were expecting were lined up next to each other, and my mom was next to a gal who had been there for a little while, and this gal was screaming in pain. And my mom, with her mm, little contractions, the naive country girl that she was, she lifted up a prayer to God and said, Thank you, Lord, that I don't have pain like this lady next to me. <laughs> Yeah, little did she know hers was coming, right? Yeah. Labor pain. Maybe, maybe it was that labor pain that, that was, maybe it was really intense. I don't know, maybe he was breached. I, don't, I have no idea. Maybe that's what the pain was, because she had such severe pain in labor that she gave birth to him and named him Pain. Or, or maybe, maybe she was abandoned. We know that he had brothers, because the text talks about his brothers. And maybe when, when he arrived, she was abandoned. My wife, if she were to tell you her whole story, and I could call her up to tell her, have her do that, but she'd say, you tell it. <laughs> she has an older sister who experienced a father most of her childhood life. But when Diane... Before she was even born, her father left her mother. And Diane was basically raised without a father. And her mom was sorely depressed, if you can imagine. It was in a day when that was socially not acceptable and, and all of that. And she was ostracized and all that went with that. And she was terribly depressed, uh, suffered from severe migraine headaches and all, all of those things. And, Often many days, Diane would come home from school and she'd just be laying on the couch in, in pain. And, and uh, Diane um, experienced, even as, as young as 12 years old, being kicked out of the house and on the streets because her mom had made a poor choice. Poor choice. Over a boyfriend, over her own daughter. You know, um, abandonment can leave you with really huge pain that's worse, that's worse than labor pain. 
Because in labor pain, usually you get the joy and satisfaction that once the baby's born, there's that delight that you've got from all your pain, something wonderful. Maybe it was abandonment. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it was that. Maybe this child was only a half-brother to the others. Maybe she'd been raped. You know, we got the account in the book of, uh, of First Samuel or Second Samuel where uh, one of David's sons loved his half-sister and begged her to sleep with him and forcibly raped her and then hated her more than he loved her. I mean, the Bible's real life. Maybe there's the pain of a rape, and, 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 and I don't know. I, I'm, just, I'm just looking through this. Maybe what she really wanted was a girl. We talk about brothers, I mean, you want to show them on a girl. I can remember with my second, the second uh, pregnancy that my, my first wife had. A and uh, we were staying with our folk, my folks because I was in between two seminaries. Completed a master's degree, I was going to go to another seminary and uh, pursue a second master's degree. A and in between, I was going to do a little business in the Detroit area, make some money so I could pay for my schooling. We're staying with my folks. And when the day came, uh, I rushed my wife to the hospital. And as uh, soon as I got there, she delivered. I mean, it's like, boom. <laughs> this is a typical guy thing. The first one took like 20 hours. And so when she told me it was time, I said, well, wait a minute. I remembered how long the last one took. I got a sandwich, drank a Coke, <laughs> got in the car, drove leisurely, got her there. Boom, she has the baby. I mean, we barely got into the hospital. She had the baby. So... Went by, I, I, didn't, I didn't stay long. I went back home to ga gather some things to go back to the hospital. And when I stepped through the door, my mom said, what are you doing here? I said, well, it's a boy. And she went, it's a boy. <laughs> she wanted a girl. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe the pain was another boy. I don't, I don't know. Maybe she just didn't want the baby. You know, the truth is, I keep saying this, I don't know. The text doesn't say. But something is going on here. There is such a pain, and she either blames it on the baby, or she attaches the pain to the baby, calling him pain. Interesting story, huh? Now, there's a surprise in the name. Okay. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. It turns out the one that's a pain is elevated to be the most honorable. It, this is the Cinderella story, or we might call it a Cinderfella story because it's a guy. And it reminds me of 1 Samuel chapter 16 where Samuel was told to go anoint one of Jesse's sons as king. And so he goes to the locations, finds Jesse, and says, listen, the Lord has called upon me. I'm supposed to anoint one of your sons as king. Bring your sons out. And so he does. He brings them out, and he brings the firstborn out. And it says, Samuel looked at him and said, wow, this good-looking guy, this has got to be the king. But the text says, God doesn't look on the outward appearance. That's the way man looks. God looks on the heart. That's not the one. Brings a second one, third one, fourth one. Fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. Oh my goodness, he gets done. He said, every time the Lord says to Samuel, that's not him, that's not him, that's not him. Finally, all the sons are there, got seven sons. He looks to, looks to Jesse, he says, Jesse, it's not any of these. You got any other sons? <laughs> he said, well, yeah, I, there, there's David. He's, he's a shepherd boy. He's out in the fields. He's just a little ruddy lad. <laughs> he said, go bring him. And the least likely person in the family, God says to Samuel, this is him, anoint him. He is to be the king in Israel. There's a lesson to be learned here in the name that she assigned to her son. Even the least can become the greatest. In fact, Jesus said, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. 
if you want to be great in the kingdom, you've got to be least in the kingdom. God has not chosen the wise and the mighty things of this world, but he's chosen the lowly things, the base things, the ignorant things, the common things, that he might exalt them and make them high. And that's the story going on here. Here's the surprise. What you think is a pain, God is going to make an absolute blessing in your life. So when you're in a tough time, I'm telling you right now, years later, you'll look back, if you trust God through that, and you'll look back on that, and you'll say, this was the greatest blessing God has brought into my life because of what God did with it. Now, I want to talk about him being honorable and that we can be more honorable too. He was more honorable than his brothers. And you can be more honorable too. You say, how can I do that? Very simple. You do what he did. You pray. This is one of his great prayers in the Bible. Jabez cried out to the Lord God of Israel. Some people say prayer changes things, and I don't know that that's true. I think it's God that changes things. You see, it's like my car breaks down, I'm on the side of the road, and I get out my cell phone, and I, I call AAA. And AAA sends out a guy that actually repairs my tire, and I say, my phone changes things. Well, no, that guy changed the tire. The phone was only the instrument that I used to connect with the person who could actually do something about my tire. That's exactly what prayer is. Prayer is our phone where we connect with God and it is God who can do something about our situation. Not only can God change things, but God can change people. God can change people. He can take a person who is a pain and make him honorable. That's the business God is in. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. That's the business he's in. So he prays, and this is a famous prayer. He says, first of all, that he prays for a blessing. Oh, that you would bless me. Some people think that it's wrong to pray for yourself. I think it's really important to pray for yourself. Because the truth is, most people don't think of you as much as you think they think of you. <laughs> they don't think about you as much as you think they think about you. And they don't pray for you as much as you think that they pray for you. <laughs> Except maybe mom. Except maybe mom. He says, oh, that you would bless me. Bless me. He's personalizing this and he's asking, he's invoking God to put his hand of blessing upon him. And he follows that up with a prayer for God's prosperity. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he has in mind in his territory. Maybe he's a landowner. He's saying, God, give me more land. Now, maybe the territory is he's an employer and he wants to have more sales in bigger regions. Uh, maybe the territory is his family and he wants to have better relationships. Uh, the whole idea is here, he's praying, saying, God, I want you to enlarge my sphere of influence. Now, James says this to us. You have not because you ask not. I wonder how much, how much more I would have if I just asked God for it. You have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask with the wrong motive. Oh, there's a real hard part. He said the wrong motive that you might use it upon your own pleasures. You might use it for yourself. I don't think he was asking for the wrong reason in this passage. Because later the text is going to say God answered his prayer. So he's praying, God, enlarge my sphere of influence. Give me more area that, that I might impact that territory for your glory. Give me more, Lord. 
Third thing that he prays for is for God's presence. Jabez cried out to the Lord God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my ter territory. And let your hand be with me. Be with me. One of my favorite expressions in the whole Bible, and I pray this often, it comes from the book of uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. It says, the good hand of God was upon me. Or the gracious hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was with them. The hand of the Lord was upon them. And it's the idea that God, when they would bless, they would put their hand on the person to bless them. He's saying, let your hand be with me, God. God, I need a nudge every now and then because I'm kind of a lazy person. Just give me the, use your hand to push me. Hey, Lord, sometimes I'm running in the wrong direction. Put your hand out to block me. Lord, sometimes I'm just tired. Use your hand to lift me up. What he's really saying here is, listen, I want you present in my life, not just on Sunday sitting in a pew, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all through the week. Lord, I want you to be with me, with me. Next thing that he prays is for God's protection. Keep me from harm. Keep me from harm. The word harm here in Hebrew is the word evil. Keep me from evil. You know, this, is, this prayer is kind of a precursor to the Lord's Prayer because in the Lord's Prayer, uh, we're taught to pray for ourselves. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us. I'm in that us. I'm praying for myself. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us. You see the us, us, us? Deliver us from evil. Keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. He's asking for God's protection. Lord, there's times when I need you to stand there and hold everybody else. Your hand's upon me. Your hand's with me. You're blocking out everyone who's trying to destroy me. Oh, that you would keep me from evil so that I will be free from pain. Oh, you're, there's a play on words here. His name is pain. <laughs> you know what he's kind of saying, I think? Just keep me from myself. Because you know what? I know how to screw up life. Nobody ever had to teach me to do wrong. That just came naturally. <laughs> My mother named me Dennis. Later came the name from the TV program, The Menace. I more or less lived up to that because that just came normal. That, that came natural. And it does for you too. It's natural. And he said, keep me from myself. And screwing it up all on my own. Take your hand, Lord, and, and guide me. I'll just take your hand and I'll just follow you. I'll lead me where I need to go. Lord, keep me free from pain. And then we find he experienced God's results. It says, and God granted his request. Is that awesome? If he hadn't have prayed it, it wouldn't have been granted. First lesson you've got to learn here today. If you want an answer to prayer, you first have to pray. You first have to pray. God truly answers prayer. When I was 16 years old, I told you a little bit about the story. I, was, uh, I did a drug experimentation with uh, two of my friends that killed them, and I was rushed to the hospital. And uh, <clears throat> the night before, when I, we went off and did our experimentation, <clears throat> my mom realized something was wrong because I hadn't come home. My other two friends, their parents didn't even know they didn't come home. My mom knew, hey, you know, Dennis does get in a lot of trouble, lives up to his name, but he always comes home. He always comes home. Well, my, my room was on the back of the house. It was an addition because there were so many of us kids. And it had a door that went out to the outside. My mom said, I know what he's going to do. He's going to sneak into the house. And he's going to climb into bed. And he's going to act as if nothing ever happened. So my mom said, I'll fix him. She went and climbed in my bed. And she laid in my bed and waited for me to open that door. She said, 
that'll give him a jolt. Not turning on the lights, take off his clothes, jump into bed and find mom. <laughs> yeah, time went by. I wasn't coming home. And my mom said, and she quit with the, the strategy to catch me. She started praying. She prayed all night long. I believe I'm alive today because my mom prayed. In the morning, she got a phone call from the hospital. She grabbed that phone. She lifted it up, and they said, if you want to see your boy alive, you better get to St. Mary's Hospital. I believe it's over in Livonia. And uh, most moms, I think, would have put down the phone, raced like crazy, put some clothes on, jumped in the car, went off to the hospital. My mom did not. My mom, first thing she did, got to church directory. She called the prayer line, got the prayer chain going. She then looked up the prayer chain number for the Joy Road Baptist Church, the West Chicago Baptist Church. She looked at all the churches she could find. And she, she looked up, got their prayer chain. She said, if my son's going to make it, it's because God will answer our prayers. She had everybody praying, and then she came to the hospital. I was unconscious for three days. I was so, because we had... Ex uh, we were getting high off of chemicals in a, a paint factory. There was so much on my body that my dad leaning over to try to whisper and hear what I was saying when I would barely talk, that he passed out from the chemicals that were on, on me, okay? And so finally I came around, and uh, obviously, I mean, I'm here, right? So, and then uh, I was like paralyzed in my left leg, and um, the doctor said, uh, first they said to my parents, well, he's come around, but um, when I was in the hospital before I came around, they said, he'll probably be a vegetable, but then I came around. And then they said, uh, he's going to have all kinds of internal organs. I mean, he, he's had so much chemicals in his system. And, uh, and then when I, I was locked, they said, oh, he'll walk with a limp. Well, you know, I don't walk with a limp anymore. <laughs> You know, and uh, when we went and I had a final release, you know, they did all their testing. The doctor said, it's a miracle. And my mom said, it's an answer to prayer. It's an answer to prayer. Yeah, it was miraculous. But it was an answer to prayer. God worked through the prayers of his people. God answers prayer. This is what I want to take with you today. It's Mother's Day. You can still honor your mom with your life. I don't care what stage of life you were at. You can, you can still honor your mom with your life. How do you do that? Pray for God's blessing. Say, God, bless me. There's a verse in the New Testament found in 2 John. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. There is no greater joy you can give your mother than knowing that God is blessing your life. That will make your mom happy that God is blessing your life. Your mom wants you to excel beyond what she has ever excelled. That includes spiritually too. Your, pray that God will bless you. Second thing, pray for God's prosperity, that he will enlarge your territory so that you can, you can touch other people uh, for his glory. Pray for God's presence, that God will be with you. Pray for God's protection, that he will keep you from evil and free from pain. You say, that's the best part. I can pray that part. Because we are the kind of the culture that doesn't like pain. We really, we really don't really like that. If you pray this, I really believe then you will experience God's answers. God's answer. Now, today I want to go one step further. I want to go one step further. Here's what I want to do. I want you to pray with your mom today. I want you to pray with your mom today. And I want you to pray that God would bless her. I, I want you to pray, God, prosper her. Enlarge her impact. I don't care if your mom's in a nursing home. Her territory may be just praying, like my mom prayed, and touching lots of people's lives. Enlarge her territory. Pray for God to be present with her. 
that she will sense him by her side. Pray for God to protect her from evil and from pain. Pray for her. It will be her greatest Mother's Day gift ever. Maybe your mom's not, you're not going to see your mom. Pick up your phone. In fact, in a moment, I'm going to give you a little cheat sheet. I've made the prayer already for you to pray. <laughs> this is much easier to do if she's not present and she's over the phone. You just look here. Dear Lord. <laughs> and you pray the prayer. You pray. Pray for her. That's what I want to do right now. Let me ask you all stand. Maybe your mom's here or... And in my case, my mom's not here, but my wife is a mom. I'm going to ask her to come up here. I'm going to pray for my wife. I want everybody to get near mom. Put your hand on mom. Put your arm around mom. Uh, I want you to reach over, touch mom. You find a mom somewhere. If you don't, who doesn't have a mom? We got a mom up here who doesn't have anybody with her. Come put, put your hand on her. Somebody reach over. There we go. Everybody should have somewhere, and I, I want to lead you in this prayer. So you're going to repeat after me as I pray this. So bow your heads and just repeat after me. Dear Lord, Dear Lord oh, that you would bless mom, oh, that you would bless mom and, enlarge and enlarge her influence. Let your hand be with her, be with her. And, keep her and keep her from harm so that she will be free from pain. Please, Lord, grant this request. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a song at this time. My final thought is this. Happy Mother's Day. We have a bookmark for everyone, but we have a bookmark with a pen for moms. So on the way out, uh, I want you moms to pick up your pen, pens, or all the ladies, th th these are for the ladies. It's pink, guys, you don't want one of these, okay? <laughs> all the ladies, no matter what your age, if you're female, you get one. Everybody gets a bookmark, and the bookmark has the prayer on it we just prayed. So guys, you wanna take this with you, it's your cheat sheet if you gotta call mom today, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but we want everybody to go with one of these. We want you to pray for mom. That will bless her. A prayer from you today will make this the best Mother's Day she's ever had. Let's pray. Father in heaven, dismiss us with this challenge to pray out loud with mom today. If our mom's not here, maybe there's a, a daughter-in-law or a daughter that's a mom. We can pray with that mom. The Lord, help us to find a mom to pray with today this wonderful prayer to bless her day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a wonderful Mother's Day.